Hey everyone, welcome to X Bundy Diaries. My name is Ellie, my pronouns are she, her, and this video is about Awana, a Christian fundamentalist children's program that I was a part of growing up. If I remember correctly, my Awana attendance corresponded with the years that I was homeschooled. So I went to Awana in third, fourth, and fifth grade, and again in seventh, all the way through 12th grade. My younger siblings also went to Awana, and so did many of my friends and acquaintances. In fact, as I've mentioned in past videos, Awana was my main social outlet during my middle school and high school years. I have gotten a few comments asking me to talk about my Awana experience. Thank you, by the way, I appreciate the interest, but I decided to do this video first as a general overview of the Awana program. I'd also like to give you my perspective on the program looking back on it now. Growing up, I loved being an Awana member, but I now understand that this program is not the positive and innocent kids club that I was raised to believe that it is. So let's start with the name. Awana is an acronym, which stands for Approved Workmen Are Not Ashamed. The first time I told that to my therapist, she said, can you say that again? And she wrote it down on her notepad. And that in itself was very validating. I can definitely see now how bizarre and culty that sounds, but as a kid, I never gave any thought to the name or what it meant. It fit right into everything else I was being taught, especially because it actually comes directly from scripture. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That is the King James Version, which is the version of the Bible that Awana uses. Awana groups are set up at local churches throughout the U.S. and all over the world. In the U.S., Awana runs throughout the school year with meetings once a week, usually in the middle of the week, and kids who are members of the program are called clubbers. Here is a short intro video created by Awana to explain their program in their own words. Awana Clubs is Awana's most recognized discipleship platform and is typically used in a church's midweek ministry. Awana Clubs has curriculum that ranges from two years old to 18 years old. Specific ages are grouped together and known as clubs. These age groups or clubs have their own curriculum, themes, and characters. Each club also has their own uniforms, awards, and games if a church desires to utilize these resources. Awana Clubs can be adapted to fit a church's needs and isn't locked into a specific model. While Awana Clubs are flexible, most ministries involve a rotation through three segments. Large group, where engaging lessons are taught and anything that brings growth as a whole is encouraged. Small group, where prayer, discussion, and scripture memory take place. And interactive time, where fun is had and friendships are formed. You can learn more about the specifics of these segments and clubs at awana.org. Please do not let the bright colors and the peppy music of that video deceive you. There is a lot that Awana is not telling you with that video. In addition to their theme verse, Awana also has an official flag and a pledge, as well as an official theme song. And the pledge and the song are meant to be recited and sung all together at the beginning of every weekly meeting. I pledge allegiance to the Awana flag, which stands for the Awana clubs, whose goal is to reach boys and girls with the gospel of Christ and train them to serve him.
my perspective, Awana is a Christian nationalist child indoctrination cult. For anyone who is unfamiliar with the term Christian nationalism, I will put a whole list of resources down below that you can check out, and I will also put links to my past videos that have covered the topic. In the context of Awana, Christian nationalism can be traced back to its founding. Here is another video by Awana explaining their founding, again, in their own words. The year is 1941. The location, a burned out, abandoned furniture store on the north side of Chicago. Two pastors see a need for their church to provide a fun, welcoming place for children to hear about the love of God. Together, Doc Latham and Art Rohrheim transform a floor of that furniture store into a boys and girls club, utilizing an innovative mix of athletic competition, teaching, and scripture memorization. Almost immediately, hundreds of children flock to the weekly clubs. Soon, other churches turn to Doc and Art to help create clubs in their churches. And what began as a modest attempt to help local churches grows globally. In only a few short decades, into one of the largest children's ministry organizations in the world. What that video fails to mention is the white supremacist theme of the curriculum for the first 61 years of the program. I'm going to show some pictures of it, but before I do, I want to give an extra verbal content warning. These pictures are horrible. They include racist caricatures, cultural appropriation, offensive language, and a racist coloring page. I will put a timestamp on the screen for anyone who would like to skip this part. For the first 61 years of the program, the theme of the Awana curriculum was basically white settlers and indigenous people. Children were split up into different groups by age and gender, and each group would have a different name that corresponded with the theme. There was racist language and imagery on and in the books, as well as on the uniforms. The only reason I know about this version of the curriculum is because I remember it. Awana changed their theme in 2002, which was right between my elementary and middle school years. So I was a clubber for at least three years before the curriculum switch. Here is a picture of the way the cover of the books have progressed over the years. As a white person, I do not believe that it would be appropriate for me to give a lot of commentary on this racist curriculum. But one thing that I do think is important for me to point out is the way that it supports the ideologies of Manifest Destiny and the Doctrine of Discovery. I will put a link to a great TED Talk by Mark Charles down below for anyone who wants to learn more. These are main tenets of Christian nationalism in the United States. And the idea of having a God-given right to both conquer and colonize permeates into all other areas of the Awana group, even after the curriculum switch was made. It's also worth mentioning that some churches still use the old curriculum to this day and refuse to switch to the updated one. I also found this picture someone shared on Reddit of this racist coloring page from their Awana book in the 90s. My guess is that, unfortunately, this is probably just one of many examples. As far as I know, Awana has never given an apology or an acknowledgement of the harm that they have done with this curriculum. If someone does know of a statement, please feel free to send it my way, but I wasn't able to find anything. When the Awana pledge says that their goal is to reach boys and girls with the gospel of Christ and train them to serve him, that means evangelism first evangelizing the children, and then teaching them to evangelize everyone else. There is a huge focus on missionary work, both at home and abroad. In Awana, missionaries are revered and seen as heroes. The program is set up like a never-ending cycle of indoctrination. Children as young as two are pressured to accept Jesus Christ as their savior, dedicate their entire life to him, and become mini missionaries and evangelists. As they get older, they mentor and help the younger kids. And when they graduate the program, they are then encouraged to become adult Awana leaders. 
The main tool of indoctrination is for the clubbers to memorize as much scripture as possible. And Awana uses prizes and awards as a way to motivate the children to do this. There are badges for their uniforms, as well as little charms and even trophies. And kids can also earn Awana bucks, which is fake money that they can use to buy little toys and other items at the Awana store. Along with the scripture memorization is weekly lessons, which are supposed to teach the kids a biblical worldview, which basically means gender roles, and conservative politics. I'm sure it will not surprise you to learn that Awana is queerphobic and transphobic. Here is a screenshot of a section from their Our Beliefs page on their website. This part is called Human Life, Marriage, and Sexuality. I'm not going to read it all, but this awful sentence sums it all up. God instituted monogamous marriage to be exclusively between one genetic male and one genetic female as the foundation of the family and basic structure of human society. Ugh. Of course, this whole biblical worldview is presented to the children as absolute truth that has to be believed at all cost and enforced throughout the entire world. And the children are trained to grow up and become the enforcers. Awana clubbers are taught to be soldiers in the Lord's army. The language of the theme song is very militaristic. Hail Awana on the march for youth. Hail Awana holding forth the truth. I remember there being very aggressive footwork and hand motions that went along with singing the song. It was a lot of stomping and fist pumping. We'll fight victorious for Christ our King. Do you kind of see where I'm coming from by now when I say it's a cult? If not, stick with me. I'm actually going to go through this video I found on YouTube called Introduction, Goals, Strategies, and Five Principles of Awana. It was uploaded in 2014 and is a presentation given by an Awana leader at a church in the United States. Just to be clear, I do not know this person or the church. I just found the video and thought it would help me illustrate my points and go more in depth by allowing you to hear it directly from an Awana leader. The first thing I noticed when I clicked on this video is the Christian flag on the stage behind the leader. I don't think pledging to the Christian flag is an official part of the Awana program, but some groups choose to have that as a part of their weekly meeting as well as the one that I went to during elementary school. We usually pledged to the Awana flag, the Christian flag, and the American flag all in a row. There are a couple variations of the pledge to the Christian flag, but the one that I grew up saying goes like this. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the savior for whose kingdom it stands. One savior, crucified, risen, and coming again, with life and liberty to all who believe. And we would put our hand over our heart when we pledged to each of these different flags. If someone is watching who didn't grow up pledging to the Christian flag, but you feel like you may have seen it before, it might be because of its presence at the US Capitol insurrection in January, 2021. The Christian flag is a very prominent symbol of Christian nationalism. So it did not surprise me at all to see this flag on the stage of this church. First off, what is, it, what is Awana? Well, we start with their theme verse, which we state each week, and, and hopefully you all know very well, but 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And Awana specifically stands for approved workmen are not ashamed. And, and that's, that's truly what, what the goal is, um, to build within the children that come, you know, that, that understanding, that confidence, and that, that, um, that, that, that strong message that, that just as Paul exhorted Timothy, you know, we're exhorting these kids to not only know the Lord, but to, but to stand firm um, in the Lord. I think it's fascinating how much indoctrination is baked directly into the title of Awana. 
approved workmen are not ashamed. It makes it so that the leaders can teach the kids pretty much anything that they want, and the kids have to accept it because they are not allowed to feel ashamed. Not only can they not question what they're being taught, but they have to feel proud of it. That is really scary shit. And for it to be as effective as possible, they try to get the kids really young and never let them leave. Being able to, to reach and, and influence children is, is such a, 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 an important time. And um, you know, their, their, their minds are so fertile, their hearts are, are so ripe. Our responsibility, first and foremost, is to share the gospel with these children. Our lesson time is structured each week. It, it, it could be a lesson about, about Paul and, and Silas, or it could be a, a lesson about Paul to Timothy. But, but at the close of each lesson, there's a direct opportunity to be able to weave that into God's plan of salvation and being like reminded week to week uh, of the gospel plan because we, we likewise need to, need to really um, unapologetically share the gospel regularly and, and weave it into our lesson time. But, but more than that, just our interactions with the kids throughout the night through handbook time and, and other, um, maybe even game time. You use, use a, a variety of different scenarios as, as teaching opportunities to the kids. Um, Awana has what, what's called a, a 2 to 18 strategy, integration that carries from ages 2 to 18, um, teaching God's word and, and establishing a biblical worldview. And one of the, the really great um, things to see within our club is the fact that so many leaders in our present club are former clubbers. I can personally attest to this. I know many fellow Christian homeschoolers who were in Awana and then grew up to become adult Awana leaders themselves. And a lot of their parents were Awana leaders too. Awana is set up to engulf families and to permeate all parts of life. And I think having that, that, um, that discipline or that focus on serving really uh, teaches uh, a strong commitment and, and, a, and a strong understanding of, of what it means to, to love and, and serve the Lord. Whether it's um, serving in the home by, by doing chores for their families, whether it's um, talking to, to friends in the neighborhood or at school and inviting them out to club. All, all of these are, are requirements, in, specifically in the Sparks program, or whether it's writing a letter to a missionary and encouraging them, um, learning more about you know what's happening outside of your immediate you know life and sphere of influence, but but globally what what God is doing. Like all these are ways that 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 the Awana program through the books themselves helps to, to cultivate a um, um, an environment of of serving and, and where you know we as leaders need to reinforce that in every way that we can. It's critical because, uh, again, we, we're going to benefit even through our program by demonstrating to the kids what service looks like and now seeing that many of those same clubbers are serving as leaders is, is really a strong testament and, and a great way of, of furthering that, that, uh, that mode of service. Not all kids who come to Awana are being raised Christian. And these kids are uniquely pressured to evangelize their own families. I can only imagine how tough and painful that is for them. Similar to Vacation Bible School, Awana is marketed as free childcare to parents in the community who might not otherwise be interested in church. So it's a very sneaky way to draw more people in. They really want to not only minister to the kids, but, but more so really influence the, the, the homes, influence the, the parents. And we have, a, have a, a direct opportunity on that home front because so many of the kids that come to Arwana do not attend this church. And so um, a, a real direct area that, that we need to resolve is, is to get to know the parents and, and let them know yeah, yes, we love your kids, but, but more than that, we want to establish a relationship with you. And in doing so, really begin to, to share um, with those parents um, that may not already know the Lord uh, what, what, what a plan of salvation is, God's love for them, and, and how, to, how to really uh, minister to the entire family. 
Awana really drills into the kids the idea of being a missionary wherever you are and wherever you go. Embarrassing anecdote from my own life, for a few years when I was a teenager, I had a sign on the inside of my bedroom door that said, you are now entering the mission field. So cringy. The purpose was to remind me to spread the gospel and my biblical worldview in every interaction with every person ever. And then the, the prayer of Juana is that all children and all youth throughout the world will come to know, love, and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And those are three very important concepts, but we weave in a lot of stories about missionaries, about who they are, about you know God's God's love for for this entire world and His plan of um, of, of reaching out and and us being the, the hands and feet. And that missionaries, yes, they, they may go to other places, but we all are have a responsibility to be missionaries for for Jesus Christ and to to understand a biblical worldview so that we can engage people who, who are in our sphere of influence, that are in our lives, and that, we, uh, that, that the Lord has uniquely placed in our path. Two of the biggest activities at Awana are memorizing scripture and game time. Having fun, mostly through games, is used as a tool to get the kids to want to keep coming back so that they can memorize a bunch more scripture. Um, scripture memory is key. One is fun and exciting. Children and youth are trained to serve. And then finally, it's built on strong leadership, helping the kids to, to, to learn a, an arsenal of, of scripture that, that is really going to be with them. And knowing God's word and, and, and being able to, to store that in your heart is, is such a beautiful thing. I, I'm a product of growing up in the Iwana program. And, through Sunday school, memorizing scriptures, and, and honestly, they, they stick with you. It's not the goal to zip through as quickly as possible and have the kids get all the, the awards and all the, all the accolades. That, that's great, but what is most important is that they understand and that they legitimately say and know the scripture. Um, third, and this is so important, Awana is fun and exciting. We don't want kids to, to dread coming to Awana. We need to, to have a, an element of fun, and fun needs to permeate our night. Um, from the moment that we come in and we do songs, through all portions of lesson time, uh, handbook time, game time, they all need to be structured and fun. It's, it's not that fun is only relegated to game time. We need to find appropriate ways and um, stimulating ways to make the night fun and exciting. Making things fun and exciting is not really a subject that Christian fundamentalists excel at. And this last part is hilarious to me because it's a room full of fundies trying to define fun and failing miserably. Um, so a question for you, you know, and th this is what does fun look like? And you know, I'm not going to tell you what fun looks like. I'm curious what, what you what you see, what you observe um, over the course of the night. What 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 does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? Um, no whispering. Laughter. Laughter. Laugh. Okay. Laughter. Anything else? Anybody? Anyone observe fun happening? <laughs> Smiles. Yeah. You know, part part of this. It, it's not going to be so scripted that, that like, you know, we, we can say, here's the formula for fun. I mean, you, you really have to know your kids. You've got to even know yourself and know the, the skills and the talents that, that you have that you can, you know, leverage. But really cultivating an atmosphere of fun and, you know, obviously centered on the gospel, reinforcing scripture, but, but, but really making it interactive to the kids and, and uh, cultivating fun is, is going to, make for a wildly successful program and, and what we as leaders are really going to strive to do. I'd like to end this video with a clip from a very funny stand-up set I found by a comedian who grew up going to Awana. I will put a link to the entire video down below and I definitely recommend going to check it out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. So let me tell you about Awana. Awana! <laughs> has their own anthem, their own flag, their own Pledge of Allegiance, their own uniforms, and their own currency. They said it wasn't a cult. <laughs> Every week we had to
memorize Bible verses in exchange for Awana dollars. Then we took our Awana dollars to the Awana store so we could buy more Bibles. <laughs> memorize more verses. <laughs> it's like Farmville for zealots. <laughs> Except in Farmville, you control the farm. In Jesusville, you become part of the simulation. 